In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to style forms in Django. We will be looking at two concepts to style forms in Django. The first is using Bootstrap. The second is using Bootstrap via the Crispy Forms library. This is because I wanted to give you a few ways to style your forms in Django so that they can look better very, very easily than just the default way our forms look at the moment in this Django e-commerce series. So what are Django Crispy Forms? Well, Django Crispy Forms allow us to control the rendering behavior of our Django forms in a very elegant way. And whilst doing this, allows us to have full control of our forms rendering without writing custom form templates, meanwhile not breaking the standard way of doing things in Django. So to use Django Crispy Forms, we first need to install it. And to install it, we're going to use pip. So we say pip install Django Crispy Forms. And this will install for us. And now this is installed, we can use Django Crispy Forms in our e-commerce site application. So to use Django Crispy Forms, we need to come into our settings and under our installed apps, we need to say we want to install Crispy Forms. And so here we write crispy underscore forms. And now we have Crispy Forms as an installed app in our application. Now, Crispy Forms comes with a series of what are called template packs. Now, You'll be seeing the template packs on the right hand side of your screen now, but they include Bootstrap, Bootstrap, Bootstrap 3, Bootstrap 4, and a package called Uniform. Now, the three Bootstrap template packs I mentioned are popular, simple, and flexible HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for user interfaces from Twitter, whereas Uniform is a nice looking, well structured, highly customizable, accessible, and usable forms. Today, we're going to look at the Bootstrap 4 template pack. And so we have to specify to our application what template pack we're going to use. And we do that just here. And so we're going to say crispy template pack equals bootstrap four. So now we have told our application we are going to use crispy forms and we've told the application what template pack we're going to use. So now if we were to run our application, we can see what our form currently looks like. And it looks like this. I'm going to open our website in two tabs so that we can see the difference in a moment when we apply this crispy form change. So to actually apply this crispy form change to our form, we need to do two things. The first is that crispy form comes with a series of tags and we use those tags here. And so we need to load those tags into our form so that it recognizes that we are using crispy. And to do that, we just write load crispy form tags. Now, instead of our form being as P, we're going to apply the crispy form filter. And so to do that, we put in a pipe and then write the word crispy. Now we can reload our application and refresh one of our tabs. Now, as you can see, our form has slightly changed. Previously, our form looked like this. And now the text boxes, for example, are all the same size, which just makes it look a little bit nicer. But now though, let's make our form look even better. And to do that, we're going to use Bootstrap. To use Bootstrap, we need to place a link to Bootstrap's CDN of their style sheet to load the Bootstrap CSS. And so we can come onto this Bootstrap website and copy this link to our clipboard. Now we're going to go into our base HTML file and just inside our head HTML tag, we're going to paste that link to the Bootstrap CDN. Now this is where the benefits of having a base HTML file really start to show. This is because every form on our Django site extends the functionality of our base HTML file. And this means that we only have to place this link to the Bootstrap CDN once, and that is in our base HTML file. And now every form on our Django site will now pick up the Bootstrap CSS. And so just from doing this and providing this link to our site, when we refresh our sign up form, we already start to see a bit of a difference. The fields have already been styled by Bootstrap. But from this point, we can customize the way our form looks further. And to do that, we're going to be using form groups and crispy, and we will wrap our form groups and our crispy fields inside form rows. So let's break down what form groups and form rows are. So from Django site, we can see that a form row is a variation of our standard grid row that overrides the default column gutters for tighter and more compact layouts. And what these essentially allow us to do is to define rows of fields, as you see here, and then inside of each row, we can define columns. So the first name and last name fields are in the same row. And then you can see they've defined a separate column for the first name and the last name field. And we're going to use those form rows in conjunction with form groups and form columns. And so you can see here, a form group is the easiest way to add some structure to forms. It provides us with a flexible class that encourages proper grouping of labels, controls, optional help text, 
and form validation messaging like we have in our form at the moment. By default, it applies some CSS called margin bottom, but it also picks up some additional styling if it's needed. So we're going to use rows, form groups, and columns to give us some structure to our form and customize it the way we want. And then we will also use Crispy to customize our fields. And this will make our fields both look better and have greater functionality available to them. So let's try and implement these in our Django signup form. As we are using form rows and form groups and individually specifying each field, we no longer need this general Crispy filter to our form. So we can remove that. And instead we can replace it with a div class that we are going to call form row. And so now we have defined our first form row. Now we need to define what's going to go inside of our form row. Inside of our form row, we're going to have a form group. And so we do a similar thing here. So we say div class equals form group. Now we have a form group inside of a form row. Now we need to decide what's going to go inside our form group. And actually, we just want to specify the first field in our form, which is going to be the username field. And to specify the username field, we need to open a tag like this and then say form.username. And so this username is going to be coming off of our form that we've defined. And then add a filter, which is as crispy. And this means that now when we go to our signup page, we are only provided with our username. Now, of course, we now want to rebuild our form as it was before using form groups and form rows. And so to define our form as it was before, we basically just need to copy this or duplicate this a few times and then we fill in each field so that we did before. And so we can find the name of each field that we need by going to form. So the second field is email. Our third field is date of birth. The fourth field is password one. And the final field is password two. Now, when we come back into our sign up form, we can see that two things have happened. The first is that the size of each text box has changed and now they are all different sizes. And secondly, the fields are slightly off the screen. So we want to style our form in a way that corrects this. Now, our screen at the moment is split up by Bootstrap into 12 different columns. And at the moment, it's predetermined how many of those columns to fill the space with. But we can customize this. And we'll start off by just specifying a column. And we're not going to specify how many columns that we want our field to take up and see what happens. When we refresh the page now, we see that our username field is now taking up the whole 12 columns or the whole width of our screen. And it has also moved our username field back onto the screen. This is because when you specify to Django that you want to determine how many columns your screen is going to use, but then don't give it the number of columns that you want to use, it defaults to 12 or the full width of a screen. So now let's get on to specifying how many columns of our screen that we want our field to take up. And to do that, we're going to write column MD, and then we're going to write six. Now when we come back into our signup page and we refresh, now our field only takes up 50% or six out of the 12 possible columns on our screen. Now, you may be wondering what this MD stands for. Now, there are four types of letter combinations that I could have used here, and each one of them represents a screen size. We could have used XS, and this stands for extra small screens. So generally this is used for mobile phone screens. We could have used SM, and this stands for small screens, and these are screens like tablets. We have used MD, and this stands for medium sized screens. So like some desktops, and this is actually the size of the screen that my desktop is, which is why I used it. And then LG, which is for large screens, like larger desktops than the one I'm using. Each of these fields also represent a pixel breakpoint. So the amount of pixels your screen is taking up. So XS or extra small screens is for when the screen size is less than 768 pixels. SM or small screens is for when the pixels are between 768 and 992. MD is for when the pixels are between 922 and 1200. And LG is for screens that are larger than 1200 pixels. Now, each of these letter combinations scales up. So for example, if you wanted to set the width for a tablet or an SM screen and an MD or a desktop screen, you would only need to set the sizing for the smallest screen size that you want to specify. So in this case, SM. But let's set our field up to be used over different screen sizes. So let's let our field only take up a third of the display or four out of the 12 columns available to us. Let's define that the fact on a small screen, we want our field to take up half of the screen. When we run this now, we see that our field shrinks to a third of the size of our screen. And this again stays like this because the fields are responsive until we reach a certain pixel breakpoint here. And now at this point, we've entered into being a small screen because this window has decreased in size, the screen is now smaller. And so as we enter this breakpoint, we are now taking up half of the screen like we defined. And then when we continue to decrease the size of the screen, we eventually get to extra small screen size. 
And now this is an extra small screen size and we haven't defined how big we want our field on extra small screen sizes and so therefore the screen just defaults back to 12. We will attend to the rest of these fields in a moment. But first though, what I want to do next is to try and get password and password confirmation on the same row. So we'll have password over here and then password confirmation over here. Now this is where we make use of the fact that we've already set up rows of content. And so we've got a row of content here around our password one and then a form group in which we put our password one field in. So all we have to do is move this form group which contains our password two field into the form row that already contained password one. And then we can just get rid of our extra form row there. If we were to run this now, you see straight away password confirmation comes up to the same row as password. Now we can set the width of these fields as we did with our username field just a moment ago. And so let's say for any screen size above an SM, we want to have two equally sized columns that together take up the entire width of the screen. We need both fields to take up six columns each. So column SM six on the password one field, and then we'll copy that over to the password two field. When we run this now, we now have two equally sized fields that together take up the whole screen. Now let's clear up the other fields so that they are, so that they are exactly the same size as our username field. And so we'll just copy our column sizing into all the other form groups that we haven't yet edited. And so when we refresh the page now, every field looks the same size up until password, at which point we have two equally sized fields, both side by side. Now, the final thing I want to do on this form is to change this sign up button. At the moment, it looks very similar to it did before we added bootstrap to our, to our form. And so I want to to make it look a bit nicer. Again here, Bootstrap can help us out as they have a class that will style our button for us. And so to pick that up, we just say class equals button and then button primary. And so when we refresh the page now, we now have a nicer looking button and all our fields have been styled the way we like them. And of course, by there being the word primary here, yes, there is a secondary button. And if we were to use that, we get this kind of button. So this would be useful, for example, in a form in which you have a cancel or confirm, for example. But we're going to leave our button as being a primary button, as that is the primary button on our page. So that is what we're going to cover today in our Django form styling tutorial. Hope you got a lot of information out of this video. If you could drop a like on the video, be much appreciated and subscribe if you're new. If you want to check out the rest of the videos in this Django for Beginners series, where we're currently building an e-commerce site using Django, feel free to check out the playlist. I'll link it in the description down below. Other than that, if you've got any questions, drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you. If not, have a great day.